And you'd look at this block and you'd think, well, it's nearly done, isn't it? You've painted it. I mean, what more do you need to do? Lots. I keep on getting asked about the jump bars and the t-shirts and uh, thanks very much if you're interested. There's always a link in the description. I don't want to ram it down you know, your throats every video. It's just crap. I didn't start YouTube to sell jump bars and t-shirts. I just thought it would be funny video and the stupid shit I got up to, you know what I mean? Was never was never the salesman but um yeah thanks very much and people are asking about hats and uh <laughs> stickers when are you gonna do a sticker uh, i don't know never <laughs> let's build an engine first so i've already done some basic checks on this engine block just to make sure that the whole block was in good condition and ready to use before it went off to the machine shop they then did their bit by boring the cylinders out to the spec that i requested and they then completely hot tank washed the full block so I've got the engine back and it's immaculate. And you would think that, well, that's it, it's nearly done. Uh, not quite. So things I'm going to be doing in this video is I need to check the piston, the wall clearance. So they've bored that out to the spec that I've given them. But I now need to check that. Only a fool wouldn't, to be honest. So let's talk piston and wall clearance and I'll give you my take on it. So you've got your cylinder walls, your piston, your rod, and you've got your piston rings. Now them rings are the only part of the piston assembly that should actually make contact with the cylinder walls and for them to be seated onto the cylinder walls properly well then the piston needs to be completely stable. If the piston can wobble around like that well then the rings will become unseated or unstable themselves and you'll get problems with oil control, compression. So without a doubt them piston rings need to always be nice and stable. Now at the same time you want that piston to move freely up and down the cylinder wall so therefore there has to be a bit of a gap here and that that gap there is your actual piston to wall clearance now if that gap's too big then you might have a situation where the piston can actually move around in the bore so therefore it can become unstable that will not be very good for your piston rings so you'll probably be down on power because the compression will be down you'll be down on oil control so you might be burning oil because the oil can get past the point where it's not sealing very well at worst have a situation where the piston's moving around that much that it actually contacts and wears on the cylinder wall and if that happens again the rings aren't going to seal very well on a worn cylinder wall you might even gouge the bore or scratch it a little bit you're going to have loads of problems so piston wall clearance if it's far too big is a bad thing now on the other hand if the piston wall clearance is too small well, it can be just as devastating and that's because of thermal expansion the piston is made of metal like a cast steel forged forged aluminium alloy and then when the piston being at the angry end of the engine where all the action happens uh, when that gets nice and hot then the metal actually starts to expand and if your piston the wall clearance is too small well then the piston can expand more than it should and again give you all the same problems your rings aren't going to seat properly you're going to score the bores and you might even actually have a situation where the engine nips up as in it gets far too tight. So you don't want too much piston wall clearance and you don't want too little as well. You've just got to sit right in the middle which allows for that thermal expansion but is not too big to cause the piston instability problems. So how do you set the piston wall clearance? Well if you're going to use standard pistons in a standard bore then you're going to probably want to look at the Bentley manual and get the standard measurements and compare yours against that and only then can you tell if they are worn and if there's too much clearance then you need to think about possibly getting the engine block bored out and fitting an oversized piston just to close up your piston wall clearance and you actually find that a lot of engine builders you know I think like JP, Bill um, a lot of times they'll not put standard pistons back in standard bores and that's just because the standard pistons or the bores will be worn so they'll generally always specify that you knock it up half a mil so you, you go from an 81 mil bore to 81.5 and that's not particularly to get a capacity increase that's purely just because you're going to want to use a fresh piston in a fresh bore so you can set your piston wall clearance perfectly so it's one of them you know if you're going to use standard pistons to just make sure you, you measure it's as simple as that I'm not going to be using standard pistons. I'm going to be using Forge 2618 aluminium alloy pistons from GE. And you get these instructions plus the data sheet when you buy the pistons. And on these instructions, it gives you the measurements, which you can double check. And it also gives you the instructions for setting piston wall clearance. 
Now if we just quickly go through this, I'll be able to show you that my pistons come under the Sport Compact 2.5 to 3.6 inch because the pistons are 83mm, um, so that's about 3.2 inch, uh, which means that my minimum clearance piston to wall should be 3 to 3.5 3 thou. Now you will actually find that these piston to wall clearances are actually bigger than standard, and the reason for that is because these 2618 aluminium alloy forged pistons they actually have a higher rate of thermal expansion so in use they grow more so therefore you have to have more clearance and then if we look at the bottom line on the piston to wall clearance it says some applications such as supercharged turbo nitrous and endurance may require one to three thou added to the piston to wall clearance so straight away we're going to be setting it at about three to three and a half let's just say three uh, and then we need to think about adding one to three because this is going to be a turbo engine, so more heat. It's going to be a track engine, so again, more heat, high RPM. So straight away, the minimum clearance that we're going to be looking for is, say, 3 thou plus 1 thou, 4 thou, which is 0 0.1 of a millimeter. And that is exactly what I'm going to be setting my piston wall clearance at. 4 thou is actually quite a big piston wall clearance because when the engine's stone cold, the piston will be at its smallest size and therefore the piston wall clearance will be at 4 thou. When the engine heats up, the piston will grow a little bit and the clearance will probably close down to something like 2 thou, something like that. So 4 thou is what I'm going for. And it just so happens that, I didn't say this till after actually, but the data sheet actually suggests because there's got a special coating on the pistons that you should leave a little bit more clearance and it says set clearance to 4 thou so there you go I'm setting my piston wall clearance to 4 thou so what I need to do now is get my pistons and my micrometer and I need to measure the external diameter of the pistons now the data sheet suggests that you shouldn't measure the crown of the piston because that's actually not the widest part the widest part is half an inch or 13 mil or something up from the piston skirt so we'll measure these and we'll get the measurements on the board and we'll see what we've got. So all of my pistons are measured and are showing up as 82.88 mil diameter at the piston skirt. Number four was just slightly, slightly a uh, bit less, but I think that's just down to the fact that these pistons, I bought these second hand to be fair, and it looks like they've been measured before, so there's a chance that a tiny, tiny bit of that coating has just been, you know, like slightly scuffed, and that's what's given us that slight deviation in the measurement there but I'm not really concerned about that I'll just treat that as 82.88 it's that close and the pistons have been machined to a very high standard so 82.88 now if we look at the piston wall clearance that I set so it was going to be 4 thou or 0 0.1 millimeters then my ideal cylinder wall will be that piston diameter plus that 0.1 so I should get 82 0.98 now bearing in mind I give the pistons to the machine shop so that they could measure it and set the piston at wall clearance that I've told them to that 4 thou 0.1 um, these bores should be perfectly machined so let's have a look So that's the cylinder's measured and I measured at the top, middle and the bottom of the cylinder in 
a few different orientations so it meant that I've got absolutely loads of measurements and for me 82.88mm pistons with me 0.1 piston to wall clearance I should get 82.98mm and I'm getting boom 82.98mm all day for me because I'm getting some a couple of 82.975s I think I've got one 82.985 it, it doesn't mean that the bores are wonky or anything it just means that I've been measuring with an internal mic and gauge on them cylinder walls I then have to transfer that to you know my micrometer and it's just a chance that some of them are you know, just a little bit off if they are way off if they are like 82.97 or 82.99 then I might go back and re-measure that just to make sure but they're not they're like a, a fraction off it, it makes absolutely no difference that that's probably just me measuring and not the actual clearance itself so piston at wall clearance I'm putting it at 4 thou, 0.1 of a millimetre and it works out mint happy as Larry not that I know who Larry is but let's face it surely you're used to us talking shit now so <laughs> there's no excuse anyway this video was meant to be part of a much longer engine block video i was going to cover the block in its entirety but it's dragging on a bit so i thought i'd just break this down and do purely a piston wall clearance because i honestly find that this is the biggest thing that it gets overlooked in terms of engine building every single week it seems on the engine building 18t forums you get people saying oh i built this engine but you know it's it's using oil it's it's you know there's no compression blah 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 and it's like one of the biggest things people ask is, what's your piston wall clearance? What's your clearance? And just like, well, I don't know. I, I didn't really get that. The engine build up. Well, Check your piston wall clearance. Honestly, it's so, so important, you know, for the compression, for the oil control, for how well your cylinder seals, which therefore goes under how much power it makes, how reliable it is. Arr, you keep on saying this shit all the time. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hit the like button if you like it, if you think it might have helped you out. And as always, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. I appreciate it. We'll catch up. We'll do the rest of the block. I'll pull my finger out. I've been slack a little bit lately. I've been playing with Fords and shit, you know what I mean? It's just wild. Anyway, see you in the next one.